if Brandon Bean was going to make a move to go forward a little bit, it would be just a little bit and not a huge jump. But right. there is some high level talent that you look at, yeah. especially at wide receiver. Yes. is the Buffalo Plus Podcast, brought to you by Connors and Ferris. All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus Podcast, presented by Connors and Ferris. Mike Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell. Dan Fates with a veteran day off. He is on vacation uh, celebrating spring break. Yeah. A wild spring break, I'm sure, with the family. Crazy. He's just going <laughs> crazy. What did he tell us today? Bedtime is 7 o'clock. I think he texted <laughs> he say, that. He did say that. So, yeah, uh, so yeah he's enjoying his time off. Uh, we want to be sure to remind everyone, please like, comment, as well as subscribe and share the Buffalo Plus podcast if you enjoy our work. I just got back from vacation. I was proudly wearing the Buffalo Plus hat, hat. on vacation. You can see here. Yes. If you're watching. And, uh, and got a chance. This one guy was a Patriots fan. Mm. And he was like, oh, Bills, I don't know if I can talk to you. I'm like, dude, you had two decades. Is that enough? <laughs> Is that enough? That's Why fair. you didn't have it good long enough? But uh, yeah, talk to some Bills fans. So it was fun, fun to be away, but happy to be back. Did you get recognized? Yeah, yeah. You can't go anywhere with yeah. my catalog. We were in the states, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, you know. Um, no, it was fun. It was fun to be away. Oh a little my grand, gosh. A little grandbaby time. Yeah, um, it was nice. Yeah. So in, in fairness to that, my son in law is a Giants fan. I grew up as Eagles fan. Yeah. We compromised. The babies are Bills fans. Are they really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They already have Buffalo Plus gear. Oh, love yeah. that's true. We have, that's if you want to check out the Buffalo Plus store. Yes. We have, oh, I hit the wrong button. That's all right. <laughs> I'm directing today as well. So this is going to be an yeah. adventure. For I think us I all. have a bib. I have a little t shirt. Yes. For them. We have a yeah. bib. We have a baby shirt. You can find a whole bunch of gear on the Buffalo Plus store, yes. buffaloplusstore.com. All right. Let's get into it. That's enough of a vacation yes. talk, but and granddad talk. Yes. Grandpop. Uh, so let's talk a little bit. It is April. Yep. The NFL up draft is upcoming at the end of the month and Bill's right now with 11 picks. And we've talked so much about the first round, but we kind of wanted to go into some of the circumstances or situations that Brandon Bean could be in. Yeah. So we kind of set this up as if the Bills were to trade up a lot, if the Bills were to trade up a little, if the Bills were to stay put at pick number 28th overall, or if they were going to trade back. Yeah, and and we set up certain scenarios that are possible. It doesn't mean this is the exact deal you would make. Yeah. But I, I also want people to understand we've seen it with Bean. He likes to move. Yeah. Okay, and he's moved up and we know he's done. Yeah. That. There's a cost to doing that. Mm -hmm. And as long as you realistically look at the cost, because I've had people say to me, why don't they move up to three and take Marvin Harrison? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you could give that a shot, but you're giving up uh, a ton. You're farm. at 28. Yes. So there is formulas. Some of those have changed. Jimmy Johnson started it. Mm -hmm. And then it has evolved through the years where the formula is a little different now based on the value of the picks. But, you know, you want to move up a little. We've seen him do it. So, so we created some scenarios. And then to let you know where we think they would be. Uh, some I like that I created and you created. Yeah. Some I don't think would be good for them in terms of That's saying, fair. what are you going to be? I think it's Bean's nature to be aggressive. Oh, so it's very funny you bring that up, doing some research, and we've covered a lot of Bill's drafts over right. the years. Uh, Bean has traded up four times in five drafts. Dalton Kincaid last year, Kair Elam the year before that, and then in 2018 for both Josh Allen as well as Tremaine Edmonds. So you talk about being aggressive, Mike. I think you're right. There has been the, the history of him going up and getting his guy. But, of course, he has had times where he has made a trade yeah. and then had – didn't even have a first round pick. Yep. That's Stefan Diggs deal as well. That's really interesting. You use those two years because in 2018, he had his mind on certain players. He knew he wanted to trade way up. He had already made previous moves before the draft to get close. Because if you're going to say, we want to go to number, in the case he went to get Josh at number seven, seven you can't say we're, we're sitting at 28 and we're going to get to seven. I mean, you can but how many teams at seven want to go back to 28? Like, what are you giving them? <laughs> so lot. usually it's a little different. Unless a team had multiple picks and you were giving up future number ones and all those things because they would want some value for this year. But that year, 
obviously, his number one priority was getting Josh Allen. He had his mindset on Tremaine Edmonds and got him. In these last couple, it's been, I think, more of saying, I really like this player. He might have been, in his mind, the last number one he had ranked, mm -hmm. and he went up and got him, moved up a few spots, did not wait, because he's told us, Jenna, he rarely has that many first round grades on players. Yeah. I think that speaks to how they evaluate talent yep. and how um, critical of an eye they have in terms of what they see from a guy and how they want to project that forward. But you're right. In the in the past, we've seen, I feel like, like in the Dalton Kincaid, in yep. the Kyir Elam situation, jumping up a couple picks, not making this huge leap into the first round, right. especially with where the team's at. I mean, for a quarterback, yeah, you, you want to get your guy, the guy, and a lot of times to get a quarterback, it takes being in the top 10, in the yeah. top seven, all those things. So I think for where this Bills team is at, it makes sense that if Brandon Bean was going to make a move to go forward a little bit, it would be just a little bit and not a huge jump. But right. there is some high-level talent that you look at, yeah. especially at wide receiver, Yes, that if the Bills were to get in a situation where a guy is kind of falling down the board. I How think aggressive does he want to be? Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. So we, there was a few of those scenarios. Yeah. You want to start with any of them? No, you can start. Well, I, we're going to put on our Brandon Bean cap. Okay. So the way I described him, I described two different ones to trade up. This is what I looked at. And I said, one of them was a trade up that I think fits the Bean MO for the last few years. And, you know, I've read some things of, I think Daniel Jeremiah had the Cowboys taken a wide receiver in the first round. I don't know if they would. They lost some offensive linemen. Like, they've got some needs, too. But Cowboys are at 24. Bills are at 28. So in that scenario, the Bills move up the four spots, and they give up pick 128 that they have currently. Okay. And that's similar to what it's been. They've been the picks they've given up, I think, have been like 130, uh, 128, 133. Right. So yeah. it's right in that mode of what teams are going to look for in order to move back a few spots. Now, I'm looking at that of saying, you know, could Thomas from LSU, the wide receiver, Brian Thomas, at Brian Thomas, could he have dropped to that point where you're sitting there going, we won him? What we don't know, Jenna, is how high would they be willing to go up for a certain wide receiver? Right, because yes. what I just gave that scenario, you're giving up 128. You got 11 picks in the draft. You have other picks around it. I mean, right now the Bills have 133, 144, 160, 163. They've got that window in the third round where they don't have any. Mm -hmm. So you look at that. That's kind of a problem because they've done well in the third round. But the question is, that's sitting there waiting till 23, 24. Mm -hmm. Would he be willing to wait that long? I think I can't imagine being Brandon Bean because I feel like it is so hard to wait things out when you see players <laughs> coming off the board and especially some of the talent at receiver, which we know the bills need to address. That is something that I will be curious to see how patient Brandon Bean. You think he just sits on his hands? It's one of those. I mean, he obviously does not but in terms of what he needs to do, my thing is if you were going to get crazy, you're going to look at this draft. Okay. The scenario that I was like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. Right. So the Bears right now, uh, they have two picks. Obviously, they have the first overall, and then they have the ninth overall. They right. only have four picks in their entire draft okay. right now. So that's not a lot of ammunition. No. So let's say they get Caleb Williams, and then they want to build around him, but they want to have the ability to add more players. We know Ryan Poles, Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean, there's a relationship already there. Yeah. What if the Bills were to trade the 28th overall pick, both of their first fourth round picks in 128, 133, plus a first rounder next year? <laughs> because that's aggressive. That is yes. very you're you're moving up to ninth overall. And you get the wide receiver out of Washington. Adunia. Adunze. I I was I struggle with the names in yeah. this class. But uh, yes, speed. High volume targets, six three contested catches, good separation. NFL mock is Larry Fitzgerald. I think you would want to add a Larry Fitzgerald type. That's aggressive. Uh, trading your future number one 
is always risky. Absolutely. But the Bills, knock on for Micah, the Bills have been a team that's drafted somewhere in the 20s. Mm -hmm. So it were to 30. So it's valuable. But if you if you know you're making that deal, honestly, there's maybe more value in a two this year than a one next year because you get that player for another year and they have those needs. But in terms of that, that would be aggressive. That would be the kind of player that they would be sitting there saying, he's he's our third player on the board. Game changing. Yes. Type. Yeah. The thought process behind it is, and again, this is a super aggressive move. Right. I don't expect this to be the case, but you could make a point of, and we've talked about Stefan Diggs. They could move on from him next season, after next season, right. after this season, I should say. You want a guy that has already had the experience, can kind of take over that number one role, be a, a player that instills fear in other teams. And with what is projected, that could definitely be a possibility. So that's why I say, again, aggressive, but there is the opportunity. If you see a guy that you really, really love, I think you are willing because the Bills, generally speaking, pick quite late in the first round. And look, and then if you're Ryan Poles, you've got ammunition there. You're at 28 mm -hmm. to maybe make another move and either trade up or trade back. I don't think you'd trade that future number one no. if you got yeah. it. But that would be interesting because of their lack of overall picks. But... Boy, if you somebody dangles a future one at you, you know, it's a trade asset and it's also could be very, very valuable to a team. Are the Bills willing to do that? That's a lot. It's a lot to give up for a player. I think that goes, it's tough. It's like, what is your philosophy? Are the Bills one to two players away from getting over the yeah. hump? Or is it, hey, with the amount of talent on this team, we want to try and add as much as possible through having those later round draft picks as well. So, yeah. Uh, it would be wild if they did that. I don't, again, this is, we're talking about if they got really aggressive, right? My expectation is they trade up a little bit, which could lead us to our next scenario. Yeah. Now this one's a little more. So I talked about the Cowboys moving up four spots with Dallas and listen, we're throwing these out there. Who knows what the Dallas Cowboys are thinking? Mm -hmm. They could be sitting there with wide receiver on their mind, top of their board. Yeah. They get Brian Thomas at 24. Like, I don't know if Brian Thomas is going to fall that far. Here's what we don't know. As much as I believe guys like Daniel Jeremiah and Mel Kuyper and all, they do a lot of studying. They talk to teams. They're not in the room. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> call back. Meaning like. We may think, well, the consensus is a good example is, you know, even the number one wide receiver. Like, there are people that have this guy, Odunze, above Marvin and Harrison, Harrison, right? It's so subjective. It is. And so when a team looks at them and they go, there's a player that might fall into the teens. I mean, look, you if you knew who you, if you were getting Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, for whatever reason that year, dropped down to what? 20 19 yeah. 20 whatever he ended up getting picked at wild. if you knew you were getting justin jefferson you'd trade up to get him yeah right because he's a superstar so it's easy to say well there's always another good player there's not that many justin jefferson's floating around but you don't know so that's it so the one other scenario i had again this is aggressive because this really impacts this year's draft it is trading up to 16. oh and that's with the seattle seahawks and in that case the simple formula for the Bills, not great, but simple, is giving up their second round pick. Now, this one I think hurts in some ways almost worse than your scenario does because you don't have a third round pick. So now you get your receiver one, no second, no third. Yeah. I personally, I know this sounds odd, but that's why I say, I think I'd rather give up the future one than I would the two this year. If they had threes, if they would have gotten the three that they should have gotten in the comp pick scenario, things might have been different. And but now, it, now you understand why, window. why Bean was so upset about that. Yeah. Because that is a large gap. Third round. Now, they just took Dorian Williams. Terrell Bernard, Spencer Brown. Your Mike linebacker, your right Those tackle. Bonafide starters. Now, they had team. Zach Moss, but a good player. 
uh, you know, Dawson Knox, Devin Singletary, again, a good player. Harrison Phillips, who was a good rotational player. Not superstars, but you're talking about two of the last three years. They've gotten their starting right tackle and starting middle yeah. linebacker um, that I think you'd be pretty happy with those picks. And There's no guarantee in the third round, but you can get quality players. Honestly, I, that worries – that my scenario that I just laid out does worry me more than the future one because I think they need the youth and they need the players. They need – a combination of quality and quantity this year because they've lost some players. Yeah. So sometimes I feel too, when you, you trade away future picks, it's like when I do something and I'm like, Oh, that's a future Jenna problem. <laughs> You're like, you'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. That type of thing. Sometimes it's a little easier to just put it in the future and say, you know what? Next year's one. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, Joe Douglas and the jets just got Hassan Reddick. They gave up a three that could be a two, two years down the road. His job's on the line. Absolutely. That could be not just a future Joe Douglas problem, a future future Jets general manager <laughs> problem. Yes. Right? So Brandon Bean's in a spot where he he's not worried, I don't think. He's worried about his immediate future. So it would be a future Brandon Bean problem in all likelihood. But I, I think, honestly, for the right player, again, you got to really love the player. And I don't know if even as good as these wide receivers are, if there's anybody to be willing to do that for, but that might be the case. Yeah. So for my uh, trade up a little. Yeah. I have a trade with the Eagles. Oh, to, to 22. Get, okay. To get to 22. Uh, these names I'm bad at. For the UCLA edge rusher. Oh, yeah. Liatu Latu. Yep. There you got it. Uh, NFL mock of TJ Watt. So trade a fourth, the Bills' fourth round pick at 133 plus a fifth round pick at 163. Six, one, yes, 163. Sorry, the numbers. Yeah. And then that to move up the six spots. I think Howie Roseman could very well be in the market to move back. Uh, but I do think, you know, they just traded Reddick, so they may be in, in the mindset of getting a pass rusher but it may not be the guy they have their their eyes on. Like, you so, just don't know. The reason I think he could be passed up on is there was neck injury concerns yep. and all that stuff. And that sometimes he, the medicals will scare people well, off. Well, I believe he, quote, retired, medically retired from football, got a second opinion, came back, and played really well. It's insane. Yeah, so uh, some teams that's going to scare. Other teams are going to be ready to jump. And, you know... They could very well be in the market for a pass rusher. I, yes. so I have another trade scenario. Look at you. Go ahead. If they were to trade up a little with Green Bay, that's okay. to get to 25th defensive tackle Byron Murphy oh, out of yeah. Texas. Motor, power, strength. Impressive guy. We listened to him at the combine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, NFL mock at Oliver. Yes. Trade the fourth round pick, 128 of the Bills to go up the four spots. Yeah. So, just a little, I know a lot of fans don't want to see defense in round one. <laughs> and I, I get it though. But Jenna, some of this, hey, listen, if Brandon, and if you're watching and we know he watches, <laughs> if we could just get a peek at the big board. I would love to do that. I don't need much time. Just, I'll make, I'll just I'll make cookies. <laughs> one quick snapshot. I'll bring in wheat, wheat thins for her. <laughs> for Sean. Yeah. yeah raisin bran. Yeah. But you, you don't know. And so you say to yourself, like, we don't know what they think, where they have a player ranked. Like for all we know about these wide receivers, they may love Lad McConkey. Yeah. Love them and think they can sit at 28 and get them or be ready to jump one or two, three spots, give up one of those picks and be ready. They may not think he's the one or two wide receiver, but they may see, we don't see the difference that we're going to make that. By, by the way, and that also really does take two. So I will tell you this. I know teams have preliminary discussions with other teams. Hey, Usually it's in relative close proximity, but say you wanted to talk to the, to the bears, you might say, if we're in this scenario, would you be willing to do this? What would it take? So Brandon Bean doesn't just all of a sudden 
call up Ryan Poles and go, hey, Ryan, how's it going? <laughs> While the clock's going. I was getting Dagua. <laughs> right. And then say, how about if we do this? Like, I do believe in many of these cases there has been a preliminary discussion, and then they're waiting, and then they jump in. And because he may say, no way we're, no way we're doing that for nine. Like, it's going to cost you more than that. It's too far for us to go back. Basically, I mean, unless you're going to give us your one and two next year, we're not doing it. I have no idea what he would tell them, but there's that there. So, And then I think he and Howie Roseman, or he and even, even with the Jets and the Dolphins, I think they have conversations about draft picks and about Absolutely. moving up and moving down. So I think a little bit of that. So I think you, you have to. Yeah. Again, this is all about doing your due diligence and that, it's not only is with your draft picks and scouting and all that stuff, but it's also with the pulse around the league of, okay, what is this person saying it's going to take to get here? What is this person? We expect these to be the needs of a certain team. Are they going to go after a player that we have our eyes on? These are all, that's, that is, this is Brandon Bean's season. Right. But you think of all the things, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into Sean McDermott's job, but I right. think for Brandon Bean, this is when with the salary cap, with free agency, with the draft, with scouting, with having a pulse on what else, what else is going on in the league. This is make or break for, and not, I don't think his job is on the line, obviously, but talking about the stress that is this job and how fluid a lot of things are. Yeah. And he, he made substantial moves this off season. He's got holes to fill both short term and long term yeah. for the roster. So while you always want to be aggressive, and he does have 11 picks, the one thing I was thinking of, though, 28 is not the sweet spot of the draft. It is in one way. That, tr that pick is tradable to teams usually from the other side, trying to get back in. And, well, do we even – we could discuss the scenario. I said one scenario is he just stays at 28. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Because I do, I do see that. And I do see the possibility of him trading back as well. It's hard, though, because it's really dependent on where guys are falling. Is there a run on wide receiver? Or is Chop Robinson drop from Penn State? Absolutely. They, there are players that could be really big. And they the may. Get. There's players. You mentioned uh, Latu from UCLA. He might be off their board. Yeah. yeah you don't <laughs> yeah. know what their medical people are telling them. So that's what you don't know. But in terms of uh, Adam uh, Mitchell. AD. Let's just call him AD. AD. Yes. I'm so bad with names. I really struggle. I just bad. Yeah. No one says my last name right, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of sitting there <laughs> at kidding. 28, the reason I bring that up is, you know who wants to be at 28, 29, 30 sometimes is a team trying to trade back in to take a quarterback late in the round and get the option, the fifth-year option. Now, maybe the way it's gone for some of these quarterbacks, you don't want the fifth-year <laughs> option. But that was where, when I say that staying at 28, you know, this would be where Bean is sitting there going, I'm at 28, Cowboys are picking at 24. I don't want to make a move because I still have four of my guys on the board. And I know I'm getting one of them. Yeah. Or I'm pretty convinced. The one thing you can't get fooled about is, you think nobody in front of you is going to take the guy, and then they make a trade. I always wonder how much, when Brandon Bean is reaching out to other GMs, yeah, is it a smokescreen? Is it, hey, we're looking this way, and you right. kind of can pull, I mean, you can. Or do you have the intent of, we're going to do something around this spot, and then you say, you know, another GM is like, oh, we, we have a move that we need to make, and we see the opportunity to do it. That's why I'm saying, like, everything that's in play it is wild to kind of watch things unfold. So I asked Bean one time, I said, when you make that trade and you move up, are you obligated to tell, to tell the team who you're going to pick? And now I know that sounds funny, but like, well, he's like, he can ask me. I ain't telling him. I have no reason to tell them. You trade me the pick. It's my guy. Now, could there be a scenario where they feel you out a little bit because they're going to move back two spots and say they want to take an offensive tackle, and you may give a little bit of a hint as to what you want to do? Maybe. But that's what's interesting if there's only moving back a few spots because I didn't know whether there's sort of a unwritten code that says, 
I'm taking the wide rec- I'm taking a wide receiver. I'm taking whatever. He said, no, no, no. I you're gonna trade it for me. You're gonna get what you can. I'm gonna take who I want. Well, gamesmanship. Yeah, and which and is reason, understandable. Right. The reason the reason I say that is because you wonder if a team moving back two or three spots. A really interesting one is is a team moving back one spot in the draft. You know, uh, and that's happened because they'll say multiple teams have been trying to get to our spot. You want to, you know, say say the Bears were doing that now. Do you want to trade up one spot and get the guy? So. Um, 28 is interesting because I think, I think that is the least likely scenario. I, yeah, that's fair. That is fair. I just don't think he's going to be sitting there at 28 and not be itching to move up. I remember last year when he talked about before they had the Dalton Kincaid pick, which they did go up a couple spots to get him where being had talked in the pre draft press conference about you know, essentially keep your expectations low with what we do or we're planning, we're expecting to just kind of hang back. Right. Maybe tra- and then obviously he went up, <clears throat> excuse me, and jumped up a couple spots to do it. I agree with you though. 28 is, you see all the value you could get if you were to trade out and have, and they talk, we, we've heard so much about how, you know, deep this wide receiver right. class is. And I think when you look at the Bills needs, there's the possibility of them waiting a little bit later, getting more ammunition and then having more opportunity at even more players. Or if they see their guy on the board being like, all right, all this right. is the guy that we want. We're, right. We are committed to this. We're willing to put up this much um, in draft stock and capital and we expect it to work out. So it really is fascinating. Well, the reason I say that them not sitting there is because <sighs> I just, I, I don't see him sitting there with that many players, unless no one wants to deal. Like and nobody. And that's another possibility too. And he's sitting there going, like I said, it would need to be that circumstance because the move I have them moving back doesn't move them back that far, but it moves back to a team, the Arizona Cardinals. And that's 35. 35. And I have them moving back and then the Bills would get, I have them getting 104 and 162. So that puts them in the early fourth round and then 162. So in that scenario, the Bills would then have 104, 128, 133, and 162. Hmm. Then I think you could use a couple of those picks to move up into the third round because that's what happens sometimes too. Hmm. I just find that whole between 60 and 128 to be massive for this draft for them huge amount of of picks in the way that they're not going to be in right now they're not in that's why like you said he was so ticked they didn't get that third round pick yeah i mean that was massive to what they were expecting probably what they were building their draft plan around right so it's funny i have them trading to the 36th spot trading with the commanders so i have trade to 20 trade 28th to get to the 36th add a uh, commander's pick a hundred. So, that so that's would right be, at the end of the third round. Yeah. So it would get them back into the third round um, and something that, yeah, they don't have that currently. And you listed those players, Terrell Bernard, Dorian yep. Williams, Spencer Brown, um, players that, well, at least Bernard and uh, Brown. And Dawson Knox. Dawson you know? Knox, hey, yeah. Hey, Devin Singletary was your starting back for four years. I mean, it's not like we're talking yes. about guys. Every one of these guys, every one of them up until Dorian Williams, who was just a rookie, mm-hmm. has been a regular player starter for this team. Uh, and they got him in the third round. So that's that's an interesting scenario. And the one that I did was the pick earlier, but they picked up an additional pick. He knows what he can get and the value he can get to move up. But I think that's the point. That's the thing that might hold him back from trading up is I think he does realize if I can get the player I want at 28 and I don't have to make a move, I can use some of these other picks to get back into the third round. Definitely. Yeah. I had them picking Keon Coleman. Yeah, he's FSU. good. He's, he's a talented good. player. Yeah, he is. And Big, you can get strong, a, fast. I was say, yep. you can get a guy that would be an asset to your offense and you wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, you would have the capital to, to go back in the third round. Very interesting stuff. I have them trading a little farther down. I will tell you this. 
I don't like this scenario. So I'll say Dan <laughs> came up with it because I don't fair. like it. This would not be Dan because this is trading farther down. This is trading with the Colts and the Bills would get pick 46. Now, that's too far down, I think, for them to go that far yeah. down. But they would also pick get pick 82 and 117. So now you would be looking at having 46, 60, uh, what did I just say? One, uh, 46, 60, 182, and 117. That is, that is the sweet spot for good, good players in this draft. But when you wait till 46, that's too, I think that's too long. I think that's too far to go back. I don't think Bean can wait that long. No, no. <laughs> Be chomping at the bit. <laughs> I mean, he did wait that long when he took AJ up and S. But that was different. They were already there and he had already given up the one. Yeah. And they liked AJ and they took him in the second round. Yeah. I, agree. I don't believe they moved up. They didn't move up for AJ, did they? I think they stayed where they were. I, I should believe know that. so. I think he was what pick 54. Yeah. Um, maybe. Let me look it up. Uh yeah, no, I hear you. I, I agree. I think that would be kind of out of yeah. I mean, the realm look, of what they would want to we do. We are all yeah, focused on the first pick. We are all focused on the wide receiver. I know they could pick a defensive tackle. I know they could pick a defensive end. There's a need for both of those players. There's always a chance at 46, you get a great player. There's probably a better chance you get a great player at 26 or 16 or whatever. Better chance. There's more players out there. Doesn't mean you always pick the right one. but I don't see in this time, I do not think, as we discussed, I do not think the signing of Curtis Samuel, which we agree was a good signing, yeah. changes their thinking. You mentioned at the beginning, shorter long-term on wide receiver. They want a stud receiver. They want a guy that can be that guy now and eventually be the guy. That's Love what it. they want. Dan and I talked about in the last podcast how yeah. versatile is great. Versatile is helpful, but... Dan wants someone that essentially is like you talked about the guy that has an outstanding skill still skill set yeah. that makes defenses fear them. Yeah. It's great to have versatility, but you want or burner speed or you want a big body or you want a guy that's an excellent route runner. All these things. Not saying you can't you know what I mean. Yeah. You want a guy and that also, has like one thing that he's just elite at. Yeah. Well, if not more than one, but yeah. Yeah. And then and until we and we'll figure it out at that time. But I'll put it to you this way. There are so many wide receivers at the moment. There's about 15 of them plus that are being mocked into the first round. So, like, whoever they pick, even if it's in the second round, you're going to be able to find a mock draft that had that guy in the first round. Yeah, that's I mean, very, it really is. Yeah, that's very But again, fair. the teams have different needs, different style of player that they want, and teams make mistakes too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again... Somebody might take Lad McConkey 16th. Yeah. I think that's the one of the funny things, too, is because there are so many, there's yeah. so many different directions teams can go in that that is why I, I do see being, I see a lot of him trading out because I think you can get a lot of value later on. Trading out or staying put if he, if or, you know, trading back a little bit. It's they so like, bad. That, that Javon Baker. Yeah. UCF. I know our friend Chris Trapasso, I think I was reading it. He really likes him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there are guys like that that show those skill sets that people like. Is it enough to bank the draft? Hey, Bean joked about it on who was it? Was whose podcast was he on when he said I'm gonna take wide receiver in every pick? Oh, I didn't see that. I think that was me with McAfee. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just taking a wide receiver with every pick. But there's nothing stopping him from taking two in this draft. I hope he does. Yeah. <laughs> Selfishly, just thinking about it from our standpoint, I do hope that he is in the first round because it makes our job. Yeah. Brandon. It makes our job Make our job easier. better and easier. Yeah. Like trade, trade up to ninth. Do it. Do yeah. it. You won't. <laughs> yeah. Trade up to ninth would be great. Because uh, we'll know. <laughs> we'll know that night. But Before the 11 o'clock news yeah, starts, who you picked. 28 is a little late for us. Yeah. You know, if you could figure it out. Yeah. In the teens. Get in the teens. Ooh. Maybe somebody will just give you a pick. He's a nice guy, Bean. <laughs> give him a few strokes on the golf course next year. I was about year. to say, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. He, pro 
he probably wouldn't as competitive as he is in golf. <laughs> it's like, I don't care if they're, you know, giving me the pick for the, the cheap side. I'm not giving up any strokes on the golf course. So. You're, you're still going wide receiver though. Correct. I, yes. I don't want to assume. Yes. But keep in mind the scenario we laid out, there's a run on receivers. Dean either can't or doesn't want to trade up. Feels like the next group is laid out there. But maybe one of those DNs, maybe a D tackle drops and he jumps on that and then maybe moves up in the second round to get away. I mean, again, it's cheaper to move up in the second round of than course. the first, but it's still going to cost you. And he does have 11 picks to right. work with. You yeah. can package things up. That's a lot of capital. That's a lot but of there is a cost. There is a cost yes. to moving up. There is there. That is very true. Yeah. Okay. It's Dan texting Dan is us. Texting us. Yeah, you're off today. Dan. <laughs> Settle down. Yeah. <laughs> you can't take the, can't take the, what is it? You can't take the, can't take the Dan out of Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why we love him. Hey, um, before we go, I wanted to mention Vante Davis. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the news came out on Monday that We're he had passed this away. On yeah, Monday, um, and I know there's always been the jokes with Vante because of the way he left the Bills. And let's be honest, it was at the time kind of funny that he quit during the game. And there's the funny video, Trey White and Lashawn McCoy talking about it. And look, I just want, I just want when I see a young person like that passes away. At this time, we don't know in the circumstances they were saying that it was there was no foul play. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who was in the league for a, a decade. Decade. Yeah. And he's he even didn't he do a commercial joking about it? I believe I think so. he did. Yeah. Hey, listen, at that time, like he just realized, like, I'm done. I don't want to play. It was odd circumstances that the way he left. But in the big picture, that means absolutely nothing. Yeah. This guy should be remembered. First of all, for the people that really know him as a person, as a football player, pretty good football player Definitely. for a decade. And it's just his time with the Bills was very limited. Actually, doing fine then. He just decided that he was done. But it's really sad when you see somebody that age and whatever the circumstances are passing yeah. away. 35 years old. Yeah. It's very young. Yeah. That is, so, it's very sad. I've seen a lot of Bills fans, you know, giving their proper. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is, this is situation. at that time. It's like, it's a little weird for fans and everybody was picking on the bills and saying, this is how bad they were oh, and back all that. When he, yeah. Yeah. And now obviously none of that matters. I just, just wanted to mention it because he is a guy connected with the bills during that period of time. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's, it's a tragic thing, no matter what the circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, let's wrap up here. Yep. Uh, we appreciate everyone watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the podcast. Also you... on our audio podcast every yes. Tuesday morning. So yes. if you're getting this on the audio pod, it'll be ready on for Tuesday mornings. Yeah. If you don't know about the audio podcast, just check out wherever you listen to your podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. You can find it all there. Just look up Buffalo Plus. Um, thank you all for joining us. We really do appreciate it. We'll have plenty more podcasts coming out as we lead into the NFL draft, which is now a couple of weeks away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Three, three plus weeks. I yeah. guess it is. Yeah. It's going to be fast. Yeah. We're going to keep, keep giving you draft content, getting you ready. And, uh, hopefully this helped. We want you to comment, comment on what you think up, down, what's too yeah. much. What's what not enough. What do you expect from Brandon Bean in yep. the first, you know, round or two of this draft? So, and if there's a specific player that you love, yeah, let us know. And if you've gotten a look at the bills, big board, let yes. us know. Yeah. Seriously. We would love to. Yeah. You can, we're not in the building. Yeah. yeah we're not in the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell, Dan Fates uh, with a veteran day off, but we again are grateful for you watching Thank you again. We'll catch you next time here on the Buffalo Plus channel presented by Connors and Bears. This is the Buffalo Plus podcast brought to you by Connors and Ferris.